Hey everybody, Adjective Gaming here. So I created a program that sorts through 250,000 games, a lot of you already know that. But recently I've been kind of reverse engineering it to help me find more obscure games. So here was my next find, it's called Legend of Zord. Let me tell you, this game was a total train wreck. I mean, it's it was literally the most broken game that I played. Every aspect of it, I, I'm gonna put a counter up. I mean, even normal things, such as going into the option menu has a game breaking bug. When I switch it from German to English, it just turns off the UI. Even upon restarting, the UI is still gone. So I, I had to reinstall the game and just not touch anything. Uh, soon after that, there's these intros before each stages. You're just hit with this fast-moving, vibrating dialogue of words here. In the land of Zord. Uh, the game plays as a third-person action, I guess RPG in a sense. Yeah, there's two things you can do. It's, it's attack and it's jump. Both are broken. When you jump... Uh, just, here, just take a look. When, when you jump, you, it's kind of you're, you're both in both on the ground and in the air at the same time. It's quite a, a marvel of physics. It's very bizarre. I don't even understand the programming behind that. And second, there is the attack, which there is no attack indicator that you're hitting. The monsters don't have a a stagger or hit animation, and so there's no way to tell if your swings are connecting. Also, on top of all this, this is not really a bug, but this game just gives off kind of this. Weird bootleg creep creepy pasta vibe. Like it's like a little bit unsettling. I, I think it's just the first level it was intentionally made like this. There's this wailing and there's like crying in the background, but it gives off this weird, weird vibe. Next moving the story along or moving the level along are kinda they're triggered through very hyper located areas on the map, meaning that usually when you play a game, if you step into an area, it triggers a cutscene. This, you have to step into a, like a very, it's probably like two pixels wide. It's honestly, it's possible to miss the, the beginning of levels due to this. The second level, you have to, you have to step a little bit to the right to start the quest. But if you just haul ass forward like I did, you're going to be lost. Sorry for pausing the video, folks, but I forgot to mention that when you load a save file, your character's skin becomes the skybox. An impressive bug, but there you have it. Sorry for pausing the video again, I actually had it in reverse. Your character's skin does not become the skybox, the skybox becomes your character's skin. So within the third level when you're escaping through the sewers, they introduce swimming and breath mechanics. I can honestly say it's affected by your frames per second, your FPS. The higher your FPS, the less breath you have. I My breath time was total of two and a half seconds. I guess they never thought this game would be running at 900 FPS. Honestly, I was just repeatedly dying due to drowning. I had to come up with a scheme, I had to just come up with some sort of workaround. I figured out if you save while drowning, you're able to replenish your breath meter. So I was basically spamming my, my save and load, which are not hotkeyed by the way, just to make it through this level. The game kind of gets developed a little more at this point, you do get more spells. I get a healing spell and I get a fireball spell. but. Here is what I was worried about. So in the fourth level, it's some sort of hell fortress. I'm not 100% sure on the story. Uh, it requires platforming. And as I said before, jump does absolutely nothing. It's like you're on the ground at the same time you're in the air. So when I try to jump across this chasm here, it just puts me on the bottom. I think it was, this was intentionally, you're intentionally supposed to go down here, I think, because there was a spider woman boss. This is the biggest enemy I've seen and she has voice lines. So she's not really an Elden Ring tier boss due to having zero animations and when she dies she just vanishes. But she's up there. Also, another bug, it, uh, it gave me a jump scare, is while you're in the menu, while you're saving, loading, looking at options, the game is still running. So when I was saving at one point, I saved and closed the window and then there was a banshee monster was just staring at me. And then reloading the game causes sometimes for mobs to be invisible like permanently so I had to backtrack into a older save file just to make sure I could progress through this game and also sometimes if you reset or reload so quickly enemies just end up staring at nothing like they're bugged out and you can't even attack them another thing to add this isn't really a bug it's just kind of funny is that there's a frost spell like a frost bolt and it's indicated by a fire spell with a snowflake on it I, I just I, I don't know what happened there I just kind of enjoyed that and one of the most upsetting things is you can actually clip through the wall and just walk past this entire level. The jump area at the very beginning of the level, I could have just walked right on through. So halfway through this game, you're hit with this character select screen like it's like a Street Fighter 6. I guess I have to unlock more characters. It's a surprise to me. 
uh, there's a new mustache man. He's very powerful. Uh, when you press 6, uh, here's another bug. When you press 6 on the keyboard, he just animation cancels like he's dancing to the music. So what was happening was that you unlock a sort of an enraged bloodlust mechanic for yourself. And I was able to just one-shot the entire desert. And then continuing on to the, mo to the mountains with the animationless vultures. Here is where I almost gave up. It, it was a stage called Nubia. The floors had no collision. Walking on them made you just fall through the world. There's no way around the, that, right? Uh, I spent the hour clipping into the wall, moonwalking backwards, shimmying up into the into the steps to pixel perfect move to the next destination. It was not as exciting as I just explained it. From, uh, from here, you get a clue to where your next uh, character is. His, his name is Shapeshifter. Please find the shapeshifter. He is in a volcano, as you may have expected, where I was faced with the most hardest platforming challenge of my life. I had to make it across lava without jumping. If you step in lava, three frames kills you. I had to I had to load and save stutter step my way to the wall where I could wall clip and wall walk into the boss room, who I did indeed one shot. It was a golem. Uh, next level was a a cannibal jungle level and there was a dinosaur there I, I they're just hitting all the genres at this point you can't kill the dinosaur i unlock shapeshifter who doesn't indeed have two shapeshifts so he goes into either eagle or lion unlocking him allowed me to kill the alligator that were uh that captured the princess insane story at the moment uh, the princess was imprisoned by alligators. Uh, after you unlock her, uh, surprise, the princess is your sister. After you unlock her, she is a spellcaster. It leads to the final battle where everything is nicely set up. It's this long winding path of just every type of monster in just squadrons. But this game is so poorly made, you can just walk past them. You can just walk up the hills. They have no aggro radius. Final boss is some sort of demon lord, red demon lord here. A couple spells, a couple holy novas, and he is dead, I think. I say I think because it sends me back to the main menu. Uh, out of paranoia, I switched back to the first character, and unbeknownst to me, I lost all of my upgrades, so all I have is my level 1 sword to fight the final boss, and I did kill him. Didn't take too long, and again, it, back to the menu screen, no ending. I don't know if it's, that's intentional or not. I'm not sure what I expected at this point. Many a bugs. Many of game breaking bugs, but I completed it. So that's the Legend of Zord. That's my Legend of Zord. The game was very broken, as you can see. It turned basically a third person action game into a puzzle game. It was a little bit enjoyable because of that. I was surprised I finished it, to be honest. This goes directly into F tier. I have to I have to recreate the whole tier list. Like it has to scroll down or something. I'll figure it out. So this is gonna receive the unplayable adjective. I decided to go with my namesake here and just give these games adjectives at the end of them. So it's, I don't even have to say why, it is unplayable. Nobody in the right mind would finish this game. Not even the slight bit enjoyable combat. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.